Hey guys, it's Real Radman here, back at it again with another video, and today I'm going to be talking about Game 2 of the NBA Finals between Golden State and Cleveland, and I'm not really going to be talking about the game, well, I am, but I'm going to be talking about uh, Cleveland most of all, as hence the title of the video, because um, I have a lot of things to say on my mind about Cleveland, but before I do uh, go on with the Cleveland stuff, I want to give credit to Golden State and their defense and their ball movement and how great they played. Uh, Golden State played a fantastic game. And they definitely played really well. Uh, they deserved the win. And, you know, congrats to them, 2-0. And they're looking like the fav favorites to win the championship. I really have nothing to say on them, honestly. They played great. Uh, what else can you say? Um, so I'm just going to get into Cleveland right now because I have a lot of things to say about Cleveland. And um, a lot of the things that I have to say about Cleveland are just... The things that just frustrate me, uh, I'm pretty sure they frustrate a lot of basketball fans out there that look at this team and look at the players they have and look at how they've played throughout the playoffs and how they've grown, but now they just kind of have just abandoned a lot of the things that have made them great. So let's just get right into it. And the first thing, I mean, I said this in game one, the first thing that comes to my mind when I look at this Cleveland Cavaliers basketball team is their lack of communication on defense. I mean, it, it is unbelievable the amount of backdoor lay-ins that Golden State has been able to to um, achieve this series. They have had a numerous amount of dunks and layoffs coming off backdoor cuts that Cleveland just are too lazy to defend. And it is that simple. It's about laziness. It is not about pay it's it's about not paying attention to detail. It is very upsetting. It's very frustrating. Um, and it's something that needs to be fixed as soon as as possible. And I don't know if going to Game Three, if home court energy and the fans will help that. It, it, the Golden State are dominating these guys. I mean, it's it's not even fair. And um, it's it's something that's very frustrating to me. And I know I keep re reiterating the word frustrating. It's just that's what it is. It's just unbelievably sad to watch this team just falter over and over again on the defensive end. So yeah, the switching on defense, there are too many times two players go to Clay or two players go to Steph, or two players go to Iguodala. I mean, this needs to stop. It's simple basketball. You do not switch two players onto one player, because then, if you do the math, if there's two defenders on one basketball guy, on one, one basketball player, and, well, I'm pretty sure the one that is not being guarded is going to be open. Uh, the guy that's setting the screen, he's going to be right there for an easy layup. But there's, this has happened at least 15 times in the in the first two games of this series. That needs to stop right away. I understand Cleveland wants to focus on stopping Steph and Clay from the three-point line, but this is absolutely ridiculous because they try so hard to stop Steph and Clay from the three-point line. And I'm pretty sure Steph and Clay have had a lot of wide-open threes this series, haven't they? Yeah, they probably have. So on to my next point of my Cleveland rant that I'm going on. Their star players, LeBron James. Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love, where the hell are you guys? Um, in regards to Kevin Love, he did get hurt with the concussion, but, I mean, before he got hurt, where was he? I wasn't really seeing anything from him. He was invisible, defensively and offensively. He made one three. Cool. He made a layup. Cool. Um, other than that, nothing. Nothing on the defensive end, nothing on rebounding the boards, nothing like defensive position. It just it was pathetic. Kyrie Irving, where are you at? I mean, you know you want to get buckets and stuff, but you want 5 of 14. You're not getting any buckets. You're not really doing anything else either. You're not moving the ball. Um, so what what is the point of you being out there? Well, why are you better than Matthew Della Vadova last year? Because arguably Matthew Della Vadova has done more, did more last year in the last two games, or did more last year in the first two games of the 2015 finals than Kyrie Irving has done in the first two games of the 2016 finals. And LeBron James, um, this this one's a tough one to describe because LeBron, he needs to be able, he needs to be a better leader. He needs to play better. He just needs to show that with this leadership and the team that he can play better and lead these guys. It's just, it's been frustrating for LeBron because I don't know what happened to his jump shot. He had a jump shot in Miami. He had a great jump shot in Miami. That's why he was shooting 55% from the field over the course of a season, and he nailed five threes in Game 7 of the 2013 Finals, and he nailed a three to get down a three in Game 6, and he was he was hitting threes, he was hitting jumpers, it was, it was beautiful. 
what has happened to his jump shot? He cannot make a mid-range jumper. He cannot make a three. He cannot make anything that is not three feet away from the paint. So someone needs to explain to me what happened there. Because LeBron right now, they just keep stacking the paint on him. They put Andre Iguodala on him. And LeBron is just not playing good enough to win a championship. It's that simple. Um, now let me get into Tyron Liu and the coaching. Um, let me just put it this way. They keep putting Kevin Love and LeBron in the post. Now, I understand that. It worked somewhat last year to put LeBron in the post. But right now, LeBron is not playing as well. That's number one. And number two, when you put LeBron in the post, the other four guys have to move around. Excuse my language, but they need to move the fuck around. They can't just be sitting out there on the perimeter and just wait for LeBron to either go to the basket or pass them the ball. I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous what is going on. If you, when you see Klay Thompson in the post, which is rare, but when you see Thompson in the post, or Iguodala in the post, or Bogan in the post, you see Golden State cutting the backdoor cuts that I've mentioned them getting so many layups on. And then the, the, the pin-down screens and all of this stuff that Golden State are doing to create ball movement, off-ball movement, and it, it's just so beautiful, and they get open shots from it, and open layups and dunks and all that. And Cleveland is just sitting here, sitting here, just shitting the floor with their lack of ball movement. They just put LeBron in the post, and everyone sits there and waits. There are no open threes, and credit to Golden State because they've been playing very good defense. I mean, their defense has been terrific, but if Cleveland would move around a little bit more, and it's that simple. I know a lot of people tell you, oh, ball movement, ball movement, ball movement, but sometimes it is that simple. Just ball movement. That's all it takes. I mean, the ball is not moving because there is no off-ball movement. The players who don't have the ball, like a Shumpert, like a Smith, I'm going to get Smith a little bit later, like a Kyrie Irving, like Kevin Love, they are not moving to get the ball. It is that simple. They are not moving to get the ball, and there we go. There's no ball movement, and we got LeBron going on a one-on-two or a one-on-three situation. And I'm sorry, but when Andrew Bogut gets five blocks, there is something wrong with your offense because Andrew Bogut should not be getting five blocks on you guys. That should not be happening. No disrespect. Actually, no, I am disrespecting Andrew Bogut there. I mean, he should not be getting five blocks on your team. Yes, Andrew Bogut is shit. He should not be doing that. All right, let's go to point number four. J.R. Smith, where the fuck are you? Where is J.R. Smith? I swear, if I go, if game three comes around and he makes, like, six threes just because he's at home, if he pulls off some Bismack Biombo shit on me that he can only play at home, I'm going to be very upset because this kid needs to fucking play. I don't know where the hell he is. Put out the APB on him. Where is J.R. Smith defensively, offensively? Is he home? Is he with his girlfriend? Is he, is he at a movie? Is he getting high at a club? Where is this guy? Where is he? Someone needs to explain that to me. Oh, man. And um, let's see. Kevin Love. Uh, it looks even worse for Cleveland because I don't know if Kevin Love's going to be able to play with his concussion. But then again, is that really a problem? Because Kevin Love has been invisible. Other than the first half of game one, I mean, what what has he done? This entire team needs to play a lot better. I'm not counting them out yet. It's only down 2-0. And I, I know I might sound like I'm overreacting, but it is only 2-0. I know they just lost by, whatever, 33 tonight. But they can come back. They just need to play a lot, lot better, with a lot more focus, a lot more hustle, a lot more energy. There needs to be a big change in this attitude of this team. Because in the first quarter, in the second quarter, they look like they're playing hard, but they're not playing smart. They're not playing smart at all. It, and if you play hard, but you're not playing smart, you're going to get beat. If you play smart, but you're not going to play hard, you're going to get beat. How do you become a champion? You gotta play hard, you gotta play smart, you gotta be intelligent. And right now, Golden State is perfecting the game. They're perfecting the ball movement, they're perfecting the defense. And right now, I do not see any legitimate chance that Cleveland has to make this a series. Because I see this thing ending in four, I see this thing ending at five. I mean, what, there is no proof to me that Cleveland can win this series, but... I said the same thing about Golden State when they were down 3-1, and look what they did. They came back and won the series. So I'm not going to hold out hope. I mean, Cleveland needs to play a lot, lot better. Um, their stars need to play a lot better. The ball movement needs to be there. The defense on the back door cuts and everything. I mean, Dr they didn't even guard Draymond Green tonight. Draymond Green on one of the threes had time to 
uh, call his mom, take an eight-hour nap, wake up the next morning, play some video games, go out to dinner, get some Rocco's Tacos if you want to, drive, fl- take an airport to f- South Beach, you know, see what was going on, maybe take a vacation, uh, get a girlfriend maybe, you never know. He could have just, you know, gotten a new phone while he's at it, came back to the game a day and a half later, and he would have still been open for a three-point shot. I think that was like in the second quarter or something. And the one play, I'm going to end it on this, the one play that summarized this entire game was the end of the third quarter. I think it was LeBron James, dribble, 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 dribble on the wing, shoots a three, misses, and then down the other side you get a Clay Thompson pass to Green, that then pass to Iguodala, and then pass to, uh, I think it was Livingston, and then back to Clay Thompson at the top of the key, and Thompson hit what is a layup for him for the three. That was the epitome of the game right there. Cleveland, no ball movement. Golden State, ball movement. Golden State playing great defense. Cleveland getting absolutely killed on the defensive end. And that was it. So um, I don't even know if you can count this as a rant, but it, it was, I, had a, I had a lot of things to say about Cleveland. They were definitely pissing me off. So, um, yeah, I'm going to talk about Game 3 when that comes out. So uh, please like and subscribe, guys. And I'll be back for Game 3 of the NBA Finals, where hopefully, hopefully Cleveland can have something to say about this.